we've got an acceptable end like some decrease Reverend Green and filling with the Holy Ghost that just, just, has just been hanging out with us here this morning. So Father God, it just you do the drive and I'll do it and I'll be in, I'll do the right. In Jesus' name. Let the beginning of the Lord say Amen. Amen. If I choose a topic for a few moments, it would be I'm not coming down. I know that's right. That's good. Look at somebody tell them I'm not coming down. <laughs> Robert Thompson, the book of Nehemiah. Yeah. Rebuild. And the prophet of that name is one of a book that is filled or packed with prophetic power and sacred passion. Permit me just for a few moments before I really get to preaching to give you the historical backdrop to what is going on here in the context for you so that you can better understand the flow of the story. It says Nehemiah has seen the plight of his people and is the cupbearer to the king. Yeah. Because he has seen the heartbreak and the anguish and the calamity and the misfortune of his people, he has a firm, undeniably steadfast desire to go back and to help his people rebuild the city. Yeah. And we build them all in the holy city of Jerusalem. And ultimately to bring them back to prominence and prestige and to restore their pride, their dignity, and their self-worth. Yeah. Nehemiah has had great achievement in his life. For even though Reverend Thompson, he was an Israelite, the Persian king has seen and observed his anointing and the king has allowed him to be the cupbearer in his imperial court. Come on, somebody. And so at this time, the king has allowed the Jews to return to their land after exile and to rebuild Jerusalem. And Nehemiah, at the point where the have gone back in a meager attempt to rebuild their community. It said that Nehemiah is occupied in a prominent position as the cupbearer in the emperor's court so that he can gain influence and gain permission to go back to rebuild the wall. I feel like preaching now. But interestingly now, take note that Nehemiah was so deeply disturbed at the plight and, and quandary of his people. You see, that the wall was a sign and a symbol of divine favor and strength of God. And so, Brother Roland, without a wall around the city, the city was said to be without favor and thus without protection. I feel like preaching now. Now remember that Nehemiah had gained great success and achievement in the king's court. But that does not allow the success that he has had. It's, it's, it's not due to the king because of his success, but it's due to the God that he serves. Yes. Look at somebody say relationship. Who is he? Who is he? Ah. What has he become? Ah. Nehemiah says, I might have position and I, I, might be, I, I, I might be sitting and standing and I might have status and, and I might have rank and I, I might be important in the king's court, but I have a responsibility to my people to make sure that their community is rebuilt and the city is revived and dignity is restored. I, I don't care what, what position that you hold in the church, but you've got a responsibility once that steward badge or trustee badge or missionary badge is pinned to your chest, pinned to your chest, you've got to. Because it is a terrible thing when you become successful in the king's court 
know that. To the extent that you act like you no longer have responsibility to where you came from. Oh, I said something. It's a terrible thing that when you get a degree in the King's College. Well, I feel like but there, uh, you act like you don't have responsibility to come back to your community and rebuild it. If we would just take responsibility to come back to the community and build the walls, then little girls and little boys wouldn't be shot and crack wouldn't exist anymore on the streets. I feel like preaching now. Therefore, every church has the responsibility to come back and help rebuild the city. I don't care that you hold inside the house but we all have a job to do look at somebody say I've got a job to do oh, oh yeah oh, wow. Lord I feel like preaching preach preacher but look at somebody say but we're too busy leaving the restoration of the church and the community in the hand of the king and the king's men and I trying to say anything bad about the king but what I'm saying is that until you take responsibility until you take full commitment of what God has showered down on you and what job that you have taken it's, it's, it's up to you to make sure that you carry out the call that God has put on your life to get the job done look at somebody say commitment that's, that, that's my bible study saying Nehemiah, for your own community, family, people, the, rest, the restoration of the wall and the, and the reformation of your community is delayed and halted and postponed at a standstill often. For while the king may be a good king, a great king, um, a elected king, a king of choice, he may not be the ideal candidate to rebuild the walls of what has been destroyed. For while he is appointed by man, he is not anointed by God. I said something. <laughs> Nehemiah said, I can't give up my responsibility to my people. He goes back to rebuild the wall and in the city. And the king releases Nehemiah and gives him the resources to rebuild the wall. Now Nehemiah has it going on. He found a purpose and he had discovered a purpose and he goes back to the city for the for the pursuit of his purpose. How many of you inside the church know what your purpose is and why you come to church to praise and glorify God? Everybody in the house today should have a purpose to help rebuild the wall. Now, 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 Brother Roland, now, where the text takes up today is to help us to understand that the devil is not going to sit back and just let you walk in your destiny in an easy way. Can somebody tell me this morning that when success came your way, that the devil was camped at your front door? may have gotten inside your door in your son. Come on somebody, can I, can I preach this thing? But yet you, you still had to go on because you know what your purpose and your destiny was. Look at somebody and say, I know what my destiny is. But some of us give up too easy. That's why the church is empty right now. With members of, can I, can I say With members of the church who hold positions in the church and they get discouraged because Somebody told them something, but yet if you are in the position for God, then God will see you through. I just feel like preaching. Don't you realize this father that nobody's going to stand next to you when you stand before God? Don't worry about what they say about you. Look the devil in the eye and call him a liar. Jesus' name, is there anybody on my street this morning understand what I'm preaching about? It's your own soul salvation. Look at somebody say, it's yours. One of the things, Sister Whittington, that I have yet to understand is why Christians get so upset and surprised. When the devil tries to disrupt your life. I said something. I never understand 
Oh, we get so upset, surprised, Brother Roman, and disturbed, and it all. When the devil starts raising hell. <laughs> Don't you know enough about the Bible? That he was cast out from heaven? Because his head got real big? Because he thought he was pretty. Well, everybody was calm and pretty. He had Jerry Carroll going on. Do I have a witness right now? And he had a Michael Cole suit on. <laughs> right now, but everybody was calling him pretty. And when your head get big with the worldly things, you forget why God called you and the purpose why God called you. Can I preach this fight? Now, Reverend Thompson, that's his job. That's his job. I don't expect anything else or anything less than him because that's what he's supposed to do. And as a matter of fact, I'm glad that he does it. <laughs> because Brother Michael, he only raises hell when I'm walking the right way. He would leave you the hell alone if you were not going the right way. Do you have a witness right now? And because you're going the right way, Brother James, he's going to send down his demonic force to come down on top of your house, lay in front of your driveway, lay on your doorstep to try to get you a trip. But glory be to God. Somebody say glory be to God. Because you know God will bring you through. Somebody better say yeah. That's his job. in my life then I need to start looking around trying to figure out what's wrong I know if he doesn't disrupt your life that means that maybe you're not walking the right way do I have a witness now God created me a clean heart and that means that if my heart is clean come on somebody and that means that if I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fill it with God so therefore I'm going to walk the right way if there's somebody in the house today that understand what I'm saying, give God a frantic hand wave. If you understand what I'm saying right now, that's what God is all about. But I just stopped by to tell you, I'm not coming down. Even when the devil wants to take my ladder from me, I'm not coming down. I'll hang from the rafters. I'll hang from the gutters. I will stay there. As long as I know that my God will catch me. Look at somebody that he has caught me many times. Oh, somebody's going to get happy right now because you know how many times there are people Thank you for the catch. walking around uh, talking about they never had any problems and the devil never bothers them. If you're that perfect, if you're that perfect, if you're that perfect, then Tell me how to do it. You must be walking the same way as the devil. Because in the words of Dr. Manuel, Manuel Scott Sr., if you are walking with God and live for God, you will find yourself bumping into the devil every now and then. If there's somebody in the house today who understands what I'm talking about, who know that every now and then you've been bumping and tripping and, and falling down here with the devil, and you're going to say, devil, get deep behind me because I know where I'm going. If there's somebody in the house today who's been through the devil this week, who, who stomped all over his head, who called him a liar, and you're home because you know that you can't come down. Look what God has brought you from drug addicts and alcoholism and adultery and sin and, and stealing. Look where God has brought you from. Look it down that alley. Look it in front of a gun and you're still alive in Jesus' name. Look at what God has done for you. Somebody's going to be coughing right now because God brought you off the operating table. Somebody better understand what I'm talking about this morning.
And in the text, Sister Davis, as the people are rebuilding the wall, and I know I can't preach all of this, and as they are in their purpose, up comes a man named Sanballat. Now, Sanballat was the governor of Samaria. The Samaritans hated the Jews for a long time. Because the Jews treated Samaritans like half-breeds. They didn't even like each other. Come on, somebody. Look, sound like the African-American race. Watch out, Reverend. They would even go in the same towns. Do you remember in John when Jesus goes through Samaria? And Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. The reason why this was so significant was because Jews hated Samaritans as much. That, that even if going through Samaria was a shortcut to going where you are, you were going, you take a long way around just to avoid them. Don't you know that it don't matter what, what town or what city or what place that you go through? If you are covered by God, that God will protect you. Do I have a witness right now? Do I have somebody on, on my street right now? That you take a long way around because you don't want to have any conflict. But don't you know if you go with your mouth shut in Jesus' name that God's going to take care of you? That God's going to protect you? Do I have a witness right now? Can somebody tell me that you go through that way? But now you know that Jesus will go. And here comes the governor of Samaria. He sees what's going on. He sees the purpose going forward. And he is determined to make sure that the purpose does not come to pass. We got some folk like that who like to sabotage special days because they the one that are not in charge. Don't you know, right? Come on, do I have a oh, I feel like preaching today. But I'll give somebody a high five and say, I know he's on to something. Sambalons. Now, somebody better buy this tape. It's going to be a, probably a three-parter. Sample that represents in a symbolic way every antagonistic force that comes against you when you are on the move. Come on. Sambalat represents symbolically the spirit of antagonism that messes with you when you are trying to walk in the purpose of God. Come on now. Somebody help me preach this thing. Sambalat is the person who is positioned in your life to speak negativity against the destiny of God has put in your life. Sambalat is the person in your life that represents your haters. Can I preach this thing? Don't you realize that there are haters in your life? Let me burst your bubble. There's somebody, that, there's somebody who don't like you. Come on, I know that you think you all that in a box of chocolates, but, but you've got to realize right now that there's somebody who hates you. And I don't care whether they hate me because of my gray hair, my skin color, my stuttering every once in a while, but I know that I serve a God that can take care of me. Now, Sister Abdul, do you know why they hate you? Huh? No. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to tell you. You can write this down. Because some people can't handle when your life is on the move. <laughs> oh, I'm preaching, James. Now, here's where I trip. I trip. For while I understand that the Jews and Samaritans have cultural disdain for one another, Sambalat has taken his rift and, and antagonism to another level. For the, for the Bible declares you all that he was furious, that he was upset. One person said that he was indignant, he, he was angry, he was ticked. And I'm trying to figure out that if you are the fierce, angry, indignant person, why did he, what did Nehemiah do to you? And I looked everywhere, Reverend Thompson, and I looked all through Nehemiah, and I read through historical books, and I couldn't find that anywhere where Nehemiah had done anything <laughs> that would call Sembalat to hate him like that. I looked everywhere, Sister Leslie, and I, I couldn't find any calls for this level of hatred and, and, and disgust from Sembalat. Now, where do I find where Nehemiah asked for money and didn't pay it back? Ooh. 
Come on, somebody. The only thing I could see is that Sanballat was tripping over what because Nehemiah was who he was. He was. Well, that's it. Has it ever tripped you out how there are some who don't like you and can't stand you just because you're you? When you when you walk among your haters with confidence knowing where you came from and knowing where you're going to help me somebody that they get upset because they, then they think that you conceited and you're better than they are well let me burn somebody else's bubble yes you are better than they are because you serve a God who brought you from a mighty mighty God Suck the teeth at me at the light, but when it's all said. 
said and done. When the clouds will be rolled back as a score, when the trumpets shall be silent, when the Lord He shall descend, that's what I was. I'll go if I have to go by myself. Do I have a witness now? I hope you in glory with me. I hope you in glory with me. But when I come inside the church, I come to get my praise on. Because I had a week beyond week beyond week. I come to give God thanks. I come to give God praise because I'm still alive. Understand. Understand that some people don't like you just because when they see you, you remind them of everything they wish they could be. You can use that line until you got it from Reverend Green. Reverend Green told me to tell you that you wish you were with us. Come on. He can keep the pass at Oak Street Avenue Church, 123 West 24th Street, 410-235-6908. You can, you, you can call them up. Some folk don't like you because they really don't like themselves. And the practice of the psychological projection because they, they've got to project onto you self-hatred they feel about themselves and they wish they could have what you have but because they don't take the commitment to get what you got I said something that, that they'll, they'll come back and hit you in the back of the head in a few minutes but because they don't didn't take the commitment to get what you got because if you can't take what I took you will not qualify or authorize to have what I have If you can't take what I took, you will not qualify or authorize to have what I have. I'm done this morning. But you've got to understand that I know where I'm going. I know what my purpose is. I know who holds my hand. I know who brought me from a mighty, mighty long ways. I know who talked about me. Don't care, don't care, don't care. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you next Sunday, but I'll preach the second and third part the following two Sundays because next Sunday is missionary day and missionary is going to be doing this thing. So you better get the tape for you too then. Do I have a witness here? But I don't know about you, but Brother James, I'm not coming down. They can do all they want to me. They can do all they say to me, but I'm not coming down. Do I have a witness right now? Do I have some people in the church who can stand up and yell at me and say, I'm not coming down. Tolerant you are. And 
they come to church to be a distraction to you. Because if you weren't listening today, you'd have missed your blessings. Do I have a witness now? Now, let me tell you, the devil comes to church. Because some of you brought him with you. Oh, I know you don't like me. That's all right. But I'm going to preach the word. Do I have a witness now? I tell you, go back and read Nehemiah 4. You see that people every day are plotting against you. To try to bring you down. But I want you God to be like Jesus. Because he could have came down. When they hung him on the cross, he could have came down. He said, I, I give my own life. You did not take my life. I gave it up. Now, coming down. I don't care if you did me. I got a whole lot of friends. I can sleep on the floor when I'm sleeping back. Do you have a witness now? Because it's only a material thing. Anybody want to see right now? I don't care if I if I lose my car. I can get on MTA. I can get on. I can walk around the corner, get on light rail, help help me somebody, and I can put put one foot in front of the other. Do I have a witness now? But it used to be I used to be caught with all the other stuff. But don't you know right now? Because of what God has brought me through the last two years, that I realize that He is in charge. Do I have a witness now? You don't realize that He is in charge. Look at the mind say He is in charge. He is in charge. But don't you know when you are surrounded by a lot of material things, you don't see the pureness of what God has done. See, but what I realized, Sister Leslie, is that when I look at the simplicity of life, that's all I need. Yeah, that will get me through. It's called the simplicity of life. I used to be in love with my cars and, my, and all my trucks. And, and, and you better not lean against my stuff and put it put, put in it. I gave you three or four pieces of my mind and I had nothing left. <laughs> Wow, my God. I went from pre-K to K. Yeah. Amen. And went through first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. Yeah. Made to ninth grade. Wow. We, wow. Where I came from and, and then graduated from 12th grade. Yes. But some of you have not graduated yet. You are still on infamy of me because you know my father. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Because it's all about God. And you've got to realize that right now. That nobody in this church is going to get you where you need to get to. I can't get you in the head. So stop thinking that I'm going to test the preacher's hymn of his comment. And I'm going to get to glory. I'm trying to get to heaven myself. And you know what, Reverend Thompson? I get so mad at you, Mr. Carol, Mr. Davis. I get so mad when people say, man, you got a job because you're closer to God. Your vocation makes you closer to God. I'm no closer to God than you are. And long as I'm in this human body, I'm in the same position as you are. Do I have a witness here? So that means that I'm going to hold on until my help comes. Because I know that, that my help comes. Not coming down. Stay tuned two weeks from now. So, Sister Cox, family, you got to come back in two weeks. Now I'll be looking for you. Oh, you come back next week, but I'll be, be looking for you anyhow. Come on. Let us stay on over the church real quick.
y'all. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy.